we will now discuss the process of blood clotting and as we said process of blood clotting and we will be discussing the short method first we will understand what exactly happens and then we will take the detailed method where all factors and their involvement would be understood now when we talk of this method of blood clotting, we divide it into three steps. The first step is formation of prothrombin activator. Now this formation of prothrombin activator actually is a multi-step process and it takes place in two pathways. So here it is a multi-step process and takes place by two pathways. Two pathways. One pathway is known as extrinsic pathway and the second one is known as intrinsic pathway. And in both these pathways ultimately what is produced is prothrombin activator. If we have to just write down this reaction in one step, then from the injured tissue or injured platelets or from injured platelets as a result of multi-step reaction, what is obtained is pro thrombin activator. It is not one step reaction. There are multiple things which are going to happen here in extrinsic as well as in intrinsic. So starting point is always injury to the tissue or damage to the platelets and ultimately it results in formation of prothrombin activator. So our first step becomes formation of prothrombin activator. The second step is this prothrombin activator is going to con convert prothrombin into thrombin. So that is conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. Again, this is also going to involve some activators, but as we said, we are writing in short uh, steps. The reaction is going to be pro, sorry, pro thrombin converted into thrombin. And here, this activator which was formed in step number one is required. That is pro thrombin activator. Plus, calcium ions are also essential for this reaction to take place. So first step, prothrombin activator, then using that prothrombin activator, prothrombin is converted into thrombin. And step number three is conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. Conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Now how this takes place is fibrinogen which is a soluble protein. It is a soluble protein will first get converted into fibrin monomers. That means mono units are formed and this is the insoluble form and for this conversion that is fibrinogen to fibrin this thrombin is required so thrombin helps in conversion of soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin monomers these fibrin monomers then undergo polymerization and a long thread of fibrin is formed. So this is a fibrin thread 
and this fibrin thread is a polymer so it's a long thread like thing and this is insoluble so now if we have to just sum up what is happening in blood clotting whenever there is injury it results in production of prothrombin activator this prothrombin activator helps in conversion of prothrombin to thrombin and thrombin helps in conversion of insoluble fibrinogen into sorry soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin and suppose this is the injury which has taken place to the blood vessel that means this is the place where the blood vessel is cut now when the, all this reaction takes place as soon as the fibrin threads are formed these fibrin threads are going to make a network and in this network damaged cells would get stuck and this would results in result in the formation of the clot which is also known as thrombose so these threads which are formed they actually make the network so this is how we can explain the process of clotting in short but it is not like just simple three step reaction there are multiple steps which are involved so now in the next segment we'll talk about all those individual steps involvement of all 13 factors and we would also understand the cascade mechanism we will see the details of extrinsic as well as intrinsic pathway but to sum up three things first prothrombin activator then thrombin and then fibrin and fibrin forms the